Okay, uh, let's see. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of these. It's a uh, dragon skeleton, if you will. And I've set up a little area in MC Edit on a different map to help with that process. And I hope you enjoy. We are back in MC Edit, and I'm going to demonstrate the steps I took to make the large, gigantic uh, dra dragon skeleton. Excuse me. Uh, first thing you want to do is, uh, with your brush tool, you want to uh, choose a material. For your skeleton, in this case I use sandstone because it's a lighter color, uh, round brush tool, and then as far as dimensions go, uh, I use the odd numbers, you can see 69, 33, 33, uh, because that will allow you to um, uh, have a central, a singular uh, block in the middle, or set of blocks in the middle for uh, placing stuff. Uh, it'll make sense as you go along. So anyway, you want to uh, uh, create this gigantic uh, ovoid. You also want to make sure that it's hollow. And once you've done that and plopped it down, you head over here to our next step. And the next step is to go to the first tool, the selection tool, and uh, create a slicing tool, if you will. I want to make sure it extends past past the uh, what will be your rib cage, both the bottom and the top. And then from there, uh, <clears throat> you would just start from the from the front or back and use your uh, delete blocks. So you delete that section of blocks, and then use the nudge tool. Head over two. Uh, or one in the uh, in the case of the beginning blocks, you can see there's just one wide, and then as it got more towards the center, I went two blocks wide, and then back down to one blocks towards the the end here. So once that's done, we'll move to the next one. Uh, you would go in and start uh, cutting off the the bottom of the rib cage and I left uh, these intact in the f in what will be the front part of the rib because uh, on most skeletons uh, there is a uh, section of bone here called the sternum which connects the upper parts of the ribs okay sorry for the jump cut there I uh, started fumbling around with MC edit and uh, just doesn't make for good watching. Um, okay, so the next step here, after you've cut the bottoms uh, off the ribs, is to encase um, each one in your selection box. And this this part can be kind of tedious. So uh, <laughs> if you're not up to to that sort of thing, um, you know this this sort of project might not be for you. So, but in any event. So once you've encased that, what we're going to do is um, we're going to lower them using the green nudge tool. Boom. Oops. And lower everything to the ground. And also going to uh, cut away every other one. Again, fumbling with MC edit, but it's for a purpose. Oops. So every other uh, rib, what you want to do is just uh, delete the blocks. 
And the reason for that is because there are so many uh, ribs right now, it's going to look pretty silly unless you're making a snake-like creature. Um, <clears throat> and you, it'll get pretty busy, and uh, there will also be a lot of a lot of work involved. So when you're done with that, uh, you'll have something that looks like this. And another thing that I did. Um, when lowering them is I sort of skewed them a little bit so it looks like this is a serpentine type creature which when it fell to earth and died um, was sort of bent a little bit so as you can see there's slightly skewed and so now in this version with uh, every other rib cut apart it's all lowered to the ground can move on to the next part and the next part involves putting uh, vertebrae in and you would go back to your brush tool it, I should have had that prepared and uh, create your individual vertebrae using sandstone so let's see, I had them five high, five wide, or actually two wide, and come on. Okay, so you can see, now this is why I was recommending at the beginning to have your uh, using um, odd numbers. Uh, granted, this is an even number, but it's you just want it too wide, but... Um, that way it will be a lot easier to fit your vertebrae onto your rib cages in a more symmetrical fashion as such. Now, this is where your sort of creativity comes in in trying to figure out like you know how you want these things attached. And you don't want them fully attached throughout the whole thing because it is supposed to look like a broken creature. And anything that looks kind of funny during this process, you would go back in uh, in creative mode and clean it up a little bit. So there you can see putting the uh, vertebrae on. <clears throat> back here. And then once you've got that done, uh, it's a matter of putting the tail on. And you can see I have a sort of a twist in that right there. And once the tail's on, then you'll start going about doing the head. And essentially what I did was went back to brush tool. I uh, used round. And then just created... Uh, you know, uh, created a uh, skull shape that was uh, proportional to uh, the skeleton by getting back on the skeleton here. Yeah, you want to get back on your project. And, uh, you know, if you want to have a really long neck, you can extend the uh, skull out a little bit. But in this case, I had it uh, with a shorter neck. And the completed one, you can also put like vertebrae laying on the ground. As such. Come on. that had sort of, sort of fallen off over time and <clears throat> as the creature decayed. Now, the initial shape that I made the skull with, you can see it's hollow inside. Uh, that way, if you're making an adventure map or CTM map or something, you can put things in it. Um, and then in also going back in with uh, creative mode, you can clean it up a little bit and add details to it. This is just sort of a basic shape that I used for this uh, tutorial. 
as is the rest of it. I'm just trying to convey the information as simply and quickly as possible. So I'm going to leave it there. That's the basics of making a large dragon skeleton. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was worth, uh, worth a while and that you learned something. I'll catch you later.